My name is Shake Mozart and I'm here to explode Important media topics with kids ministry pros Whether you got a mega budget or just minimal dough Welcome to the Kids Church Visual Show Hello and welcome to the Kids Church Visual Show with Shake Mozart I'm Shake Mozart and this is a show that wants to help you visually communicate the gospel to your kids On this episode, we're going to talk about using visuals in special needs ministry but first, let's hear what you had to say. What is your ideal strategy for ministering to kids with special needs? Ideally, ministering to children with special needs, you have to have some type of uh, training. So my ideal strategy is to partner with the local community that does the training and they work with the kids to help work with my volunteers so that we have a win-win and not a, oh, we made it that time. Yeah, I think ideal strategy, first of all, is to partner with parents. Uh, that's the number one. You got to partner with the parents and know where that child is. And then the next thing is just to help them incorporate into your own ministry and however, whatever you do. And we make sure we have lots of stuff around the outer edges of the uh, space so that if kids need to play, they can play. My ideal strategy for ministering to kids with special needs is to ask for help because that is a, uh, an area that I am not trained in or well versed in. You know, I've, I've done a little bit of training, a little bit of research, but my go to strategy is find someone smarter in the room who knows more about it than I do. In an ideal world, each one of those children would have a special buddy that is committed, not just voluntold to be there or not just on the roster, but loving on this child in relationship with the child, maybe even more than one person for these kids because, hey, vacation, sick time, you know, all that happens. So someone that genuinely loves on this child and is ministering to the child and the family each and every week. You know, I think that special needs is very like it's varied, right? I think that you need a couple different approaches. I, I love having a sensory room option for those kids that really need to be removed every once in a while. And that's that's a lot of, that's a lot of helpful, that's helpful, right? Um, but also I think the buddy system is just still great. I think incorporating them into what you're already doing, a lot of kids can be. So just putting in a good buddy system and having those volunteers who can be one-on-one -on -one with those kids. I also make it a very big point to not, um, when the parents come to pick them up, to not automatically dump like the worst thing about what happened with them because they hear it all the time. So I'm always telling them the positive of what happened in, during that day. If there was an, a situation that needed attention, then I bring that up after I already did a positive. I, I would like to see for us, um, I would like to see our events are not planned with special needs at all. So maybe an Easter egg hunt with, you know, plywood down in the grass to where kids in wheelchairs can go. Um, we're a mile away from a children's hospital with lots of special, you know, lots of needs, physical needs, especially. And what do we do to partner with those kids and those families? And then um, for me, I would love to see more respite care um, date nights for those special needs families. My experience has been uh, really twofold. All right, it's, it's the one-on-one -on -one special touch while still trying to keep them connected to a group. Um, I don't want to isolate special needs. I want to bring them in to the fold because they're not, they're not so different that they need to be isolated. Again, every need is different. Every unique child is different. And so we try to cater to that specific child while still making them feel seen, known, and loved just like every other kid. Yeah, um, honestly, I just think it's about relationships and um, finding out the child's exact needs because no child is the same. Um, so you might have one kid that's on one end of a diagnostic spectrum and another kid that's on the other and they have very completely different needs or they could be right next to each other on the spectrum and still have very different needs. So building that relationship with the families and just, hey, what does your child need to make coming to church successful for them? because um, it looks different for every kid. Um, but the biggest goal is to just show these kids and these families that Jesus loves them because, um, you know, statistics tell us that one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest unreached people groups in the U.S. are families with children with special needs because there's just not a place for them to go. And um, so the goal is just to change that. Hello and welcome to the Kids Church Visual Show with Shake Mozart. 
I'm Shake Mozart, and I've got an esteemed guest with me today, none other than Pastor Tyler Phillips Hello, out of Kissimmee, everyone. Florida. Yes, Kissimmee, but I I prefer Orlando just because it's, you know, yeah. it's a little bit more. Right. It's a little, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know, know what I mean? Tyler, it's nice to talk to somebody from Orlando, from Central Florida, because I've talked to I talked to so many people that are out of Central Florida, and they like they don't realize how amazing it is to live here. So, yes, we live so where excited. people vacation. Is that what they exactly, say? Exactly, exactly. The number one vacation spot in the world. Yes. Um. So so Tyler, today we're going to talk about um, special needs ministry and how mm-hmm. to use visuals to minister to kids with special needs. Mm-hmm. Um. You come kind of. You have a, a, a lot of ministry experience, but over the last couple of years, you've you've studied um, uh, uh, ASL, and 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 that's kind of that's your your world, your your work right now. Um, but but let's back up a little bit further. Tell us uh, about you and how how you got started in ministry. Yeah, so uh, specifically towards kids ministry, I remember one day. Uh, I think I was about 16, 17 years old. And it was on a Sunday uh, between services. And I was with one of my uh, close friends who was actually now is a kid's pastor. And mm-hmm. um, I remember we just like walked by like the children's ministry building. And we were like, huh, we should go help with the kids. And we started, I think maybe the next, the following Sunday. And ever since then, we kind of just, that's where I've been. I've just been in kids ministry and kind of everything just kind of opened up and um, doors open. And I just, that's been what I've been doing. Kids pastoring, directing, coordinating. Mm-hmm those different roles in kids ministry. Yeah. And, and, you know, I didn't mention this in the intro, but it just so happens that your greatest mentor is me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, some would say that you could maybe assume, <laughs> do I say that <laughs> to, to be discussed? Uh, <laughs> no, but, we, but we, do go, we do go back shake. Don't we, don't we have a history? Right. I was, you were my intern. Do you remember? No, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 I no. I tell no. you everything that opposite. you knew. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. You were my intern. Yeah, but, so. But you've been, you, you've been in ministry now for, for how long? Um, I would say As about. As a, like, paid professional. Yeah, probably about 12 years. Probably 12 going on 13 years. So, and now when I put that into perspective, I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, like, it seems, like, so, like, long. I'm like, but. I feel like everything just kind of went back to back. Like, oh, okay, right. wow, 12, 13 years. Like, time flies, you know? Time flies when you're yeah. having fun. And, and, and recent mom? Yes, I just had a baby in May. Congratulations. She is the cutest. And her name is Felicity. And also, I know right. I, there's a bee around here. So if you see me run off camera, it's because I'm terrified of bees. And I'm not joking. <laughs> um, just a side note. I know. But I will, I will yeah. leave the camera. Um, and also, I do know the, the godfather of this, this, ba- this, this baby's godfather. That's right. And I'm actually talking to him right now. Shay, isn't that how? Yes. Aren't you honored? Yes, I'm so honored. It's so it's so nice to know also that Felicity is guaranteed a life of success because of her her godfather. Me. You know. Mm, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, so I just had a baby so, so I um uh am just being a mom right now and uh I'm and I'm an interpreter. I'm a sign language interpreter too. Which mm-hmm. I've been doing for about five years right. now, uh, as a working sign language interpreter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow, I can't believe it's been that long. So um so, so we are focusing kind of on special needs, like the broad, as more of a broad category. Right. Um, but tell us how you got into how you got into the the um, interpreting world. Yeah. So, um, if we like go back, I'm gonna go back like a long time ago. So, one of my mm-hmm. uh, close family friends, um, uh, she comes from a deaf family. So, I kind of grew up around sign language, mm-hmm. just like naturally. And so, I was always like around her family. And really, I didn't really think much about it. Like, I didn't really realize how much that would kind of come to play, like in my future and everything. Mm -hmm. And so um, fast forward, I did an internship, you know, for like a kid's ministry for two years. And then I really wasn't even interpreting at that point. But then I went back to school and I I was like, oh, well, I need to take some 
um, credits for college, so, you know, to graduate and uh, mm-hmm. styling like um, ASL classes kind of popped up. I was like, oh, I have, I have like a foundation in ASL, like I'll just take it. And then, uh, yeah, long story short, I kind of went into their interpreting program and I graduated from interpreting program and I've been working as a sign language interpreter um, since uh, 2020. Oh, well, 2020, 2019, I believe. So, um, yeah, so that's yeah, kind of like okay. my background, just like, you know, just I've been in the community with, um, within the deaf community. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, well, so, so let's, let's, um, let's, let's broaden the conversation a bit. Um, as far as special needs ministry is concerned, why is it important for churches to, to reach out to families with kids with special needs? Just because I think it's, um, first of all, equality and like, you know, everyone should have, just as you reach out to someone who may be a first time visitor or someone, um, we reach out to people mm-hmm. who are in our congregation just like naturally, we should be reaching out to these families who will sometimes just fall through the cracks just because they don't think they have the support or they don't think that the church has the resources for them, like just on a Sunday morning mm-hmm. or like during the week. Um, and just because sometimes the church doesn't know how to really respond to some right. people, sometimes with special needs, um, people with families with special needs um, or families with kids with special needs in this case. Um, so just as we would reach out to anyone else, I think those families are important too, um, just across the board. So, Yeah. Are, are there any like strategies that you've, you've used to, to reach out to families with special needs, with kids with special needs? So, you know, a lot of times it's really interesting because you don't really know someone's like um, needs until you actually get to like, when you, until you speak to sure. them. So a yeah. lot of times you can just be passing people in the church and just every day and you don't know like if they have, have uh, special needs or they need accommodations until you really get to know mm-hmm. them. So it's, it's kind of interesting because uh, for example, like, um, at the last church I was at, there was a family and uh, a family, and they had four children. And I didn't realize one was deaf until like I was talking to, I think I, no, I noticed like um, her implant. And so then I was started mm-hmm. uh, speaking with the parents, I'm like, oh, like, does she sign? Like, we know what um, does she need from us? And so really you don't mm-hmm. know until you actually ask and seek out. That's sure. why I feel like it's important that we reach out to these families or just make it known that, hey, this, this is a place where we have the accommodations and we have mm-hmm. accessibility if you do need it. Because it, you just can't assume, you know, like you just never know who you come in contact right. with until you get to know them on a little more personal level. So... And usually uh, some people yeah. are not really going to, you know, uh, explain their situation right. or, you know, what they need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because I feel like our understanding of, of just the like human condition over the last couple of years, we've seen that the, mm-hmm. the, the spectrum of special needs, it, it's, it's almost like we're, we're, we're all kind of at some point. There, all of us have a certain, you know, thing that we that we deal with, we struggle with, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm even saying that correctly, but you know what I mean. It's I like, know what you mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but but what are what are some of the accommodations um, that you've used in the past, or you've seen used, or, or or maybe what even what's the ideal scenario for ministering to, to families with special yeah, kids so with special needs? Yeah, so I think in some situations it could be like the most simple. Um, um, change or action to make something more accessible for someone. So for example, if there's a child with Mm -hmm. low vision, it could be as simply as in coming into like the children's ministry, like area or their room. And instead of sitting towards the back, like you just make a space for them up front. It could be like uh, simple things like that, or on a bigger level of like finding, you know, um, someone to be with a child who needs, um, extra support. Um, so really it's, like you're saying, it's such a variety. Like there's, we are so diverse as a, like, as a people and we all have different needs. So it's mm-hmm. just kind of figuring out what that need is because you can't also say like, oh, this will work for everyone that is deaf or this right. will work for everyone who has low vision or everyone um, who has a, a sensory seeking, you know? So it's very, mm-hmm. um, what's the word? Um, specific to each person. So yeah. Sure, so, sure. Um, with the child who was deaf, for example, luckily I, I know ASL, so I was able to kind of mm-hmm. condense, um, things, you know, the information that was happening on a Sunday morning, like for like the Bible story yeah. to her. Right. Um, so she wasn't completely lost and, um, yeah. So 
really it's just again knowing what that specific person needs and right. like you know making it happen as the best as you can you know and a lot of times these situations are really last minute because you don't know who's coming to church um yeah, so sure. you really have to adapt pretty fast and try to mm -hmm. think of it so i think it's always good to have ideas in your mind mm -hmm. or just like as a team or a group to like say okay this is what we can do if this person shows up and needs this or if someone needs this so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and and i i think ultimately it's, you have to have a relationship with your with the families in right your, in your ministry what right. what are your thoughts on um with with kids with special needs um integrating them into like the you know kids church environment at large versus having a special area or class um, that's a good question. Hmm. So like, I feel, again, going back to everyone's specific needs, you know, um, some mm -hmm. parents may prefer that their child uh, is in a, um, a, just a different group, something more, you know, smaller, just like for their needs specifically, or and so mm -hmm. some kids are just, you know, are able to um, participate, like effectively and everything in a larger group, um, especially so I know some churches for kids ministry, they have a more of a small group. Uh, format. Some um, kids' churches mm -hmm. have a, a large group. Um, you know, everything happens on the front of the stage. So I think right. that also plays a factor in it. Uh, but I, for me, I think it's just every, their choice. I, I'm open either way. I mm -hmm. think we should always be able to adapt to that. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. I guess that's not really a clear cut answer, but I think it's whatever yeah. is a preference for the family and you know whatever the ministry can support at the same time you know whether that they do have right, like a right. what we've seen is like a um a special needs classroom or you know mm -hmm. or, or classes buddies. versus a large group buddies exactly so not right, a clear-cut answer right. but i think yeah. it's just whatever is needed like and we have to kind right. of adapt <laughs> you know so yeah yeah i i, I think i think you're right because they're the needs of each individual child vary. Mm -hmm. So there's not one solution because, right. you know, like, like you're saying this, this, this kid that walked in and, and is deaf, their needs are different than, than somebody, than anybody else, you know? Right. So, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting that to have kind of a, a variety. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so we talk about uh, the, the show is about visuals, kids church visuals. Um, and, and, I think now as I, as I look at the questions, it's like, I, I kind of have to reframe based on what you said about like the individual needs. So, um, but in general, okay. how can yeah. visuals, <laughs> how can visuals enhance the experience of your ministry to kids with special needs? Yeah. Um, I think like, first of all, visuals just for everyone, like we need something that will like capture like your attention. Right. So, and, but then in mm -hmm. this case, I think using, bright colors or using um, mm -hmm. even like contrast colors. Like if we talk about someone with mm -hmm. low vision mm -hmm. or something like, um, I think uh, anything that can capture and bring in attention, I think is always effective um, in a sense of like visuals in kids ministry. So just for like any kids too. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, so if, if a child comes in and they are low vision, how, how do you think that, that you would kind of adapt the experience to them in, in that, that specific case. Yeah. Let me think of like, a, um, an idea. Let me think of like a scenario. Okay. So say, um, the children's ministry format on a Sunday morning is like a uh, whole group then goes and then to small group, um, after, you know, like within mm -hmm. the service. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think the service can be, once you get to move to the small group portion for that child, I think it could be easy as, um, taking some of the visual aids. I know some a curriculum has uh, the digital, uh, like the visual, um, mm -hmm. Im, you know, the images, and they you can actually get them printed. Right, yeah. So it can be easy just having it printed so oh. like it can be closer, that that child can like look at it closer and to be able to like, uh, right. however they need to be, for it to be accessible to them. So it could be like that or for, um, say, a child maybe who um, has sensory needs, it could be as easy as like going mm -hmm. from a large group to like putting the story, the Bible story into something that you can use your, for your senses, like for touch and, you know, mm -hmm. for smells mm -hmm. and everything, which would be fun for everyone. Um, 
So those are just like ideas, like right. bringing the Bible story to like making it tangible, I guess it is, right? Is that the word? Yeah. yeah. You know, where you can actually get your yeah. senses involved and everything that can be really effective mm-hmm. for someone who is sensory seeking or has different sensory needs. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, Tyler, I really, I taught you well, <laughs> I got to say. You did, Shay. Thanks. As a mentor, I, I feel very so, successful. Yeah. Um, it's almost like you should know the answers. So you, <laughs> okay. You know, because like you. <laughs> what ha, ha, have there been? Have there been experiences <laughs> or, or like situations that, that you've experienced, or or that you've seen other churches or other other ministry leaders that's like nailed it? Yeah, um, I uh, know of a church that has a, um, within their services on a Sunday morning, they have a, a, I guess, when service is happening, they have a different room, one of their chapels that they use completely mm-hmm. for uh, those who need accommodations as, and special needs who mm-hmm. otherwise wouldn't be able to, wouldn't, I guess, not to say they wouldn't be able to, but like, it wouldn't be the best for them to like maybe sit into the regular um congregational mm-hmm. service you know um but this area yeah. is just it's it's like a large um, group it's exactly so it's accommodating like it's um like warm and friendly like they can just be like of course just be themselves and like everyone in that in that um chapel they understand you know they're understanding and like it's just for families to mm-hmm. feel like they have support with other families and engage mm-hmm. in the sermon and engage in the worship experience so um, that mm-hmm. church is doing amazing. And of course they have, um, they also do a uh, camp for um, uh, for deaf children, deaf hard of hearing children and their wow. siblings yeah. um, or mm-hmm. um, children of deaf adults. And it's, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so they do a camp every summer, which is really cool too, that I've, I've never seen before just for, you know, for CODAs, which is a child of a deaf adult, um, deaf and hard mm-hmm. of hearing children and their siblings. So that's really, I think that's amazing to have that too. Yeah. So yeah, they're doing yeah, great. Awesome. Like it's, it's cool to see like this different things they think of and, you know, just for, for them to be a part and to um, experience everything that anyone else would experience on a, you know, yeah. not just Sundays, but throughout the week with different services and different small groups and this. And yeah. That. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, for, for kids ministry leaders that are just getting started or, or just kind of acclimating, um, to the, to the, the, the needs of kids with special needs, where, where can they get started? What are some ways that they can kind of get to know the individual needs and, mm-hmm. and start making accommodations? Yeah, I think it's just one getting to know families um getting to know the Mm -hmm. people that are coming um, every sunday or every wednesday or midweek services and all that um and maybe even communicating through um newsletters emails saying hey if maybe like hey if uh, you if your child needs um accommodations or something needs to be made accessible for your child like let us know um it can be Mm -hmm. um another way is like just reaching out to the community like uh, community resources and just like being able to Mm-hmm. Um, learn from other organizations on how they um, are able mm-hmm. to make things like, effective with their the people that they serve in the community as well. So I think there's different ways that you can do. But I think one is just become getting up to know your the people that you come in contact with on a personal level. So right, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's that's so that's so great because it is like you, you're dealing with individuals. So. Right. Learn about the individual, and you know, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, where? What are some? What are some um, organizations, maybe ministries that they can they can reach out to connect with? Yeah. So um, I know, and you, you're familiar with this one is um, Nathaniel's Hope, and they're mm-hmm. really big in central, like in the community. Um, they have uh, these huge events that they have. Uh, I think maybe twice a year. Um, mm-hmm. Here in Central around, Florida. In, yeah, here in Central Florida. Um, but they're but they're doing they're doing like make them smile events throughout every the nation. right right make them smile exactly uh, for children mm-hmm. with special needs um, just to have that just um, spread community what's it called like um, for resources for parents awareness, awareness yeah. um, you know all of that um, so yeah I know that's a big one and yeah I'm sorry yeah. my mind is so, yeah 
<laughs> <laughs> so, so when, when you think about kids ministry, five years and, and, and kids ministry to kids with special needs, five years from now, where, what, what's the ideal that it'll look like in a church? I think it would be really cool to see, um, well, I think it just as technology like advances, we're going to see more like immersive experiences for everyone. Mm-hmm. So whether that's like, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Uh, VR or I guess AI and all that kind of stuff. We can maybe see that stuff kind of mm-hmm. come to play uh, within the church, uh, which would be really cool. Also, it would be nice to see, I think having, for example, like um, I know some churches have like sign language interpreters um, for their main mm-hmm. congregation, but maybe having sign language interpreters readily for their mm-hmm. children or having just uh, right. visual aids, you know, just, all, just being prepared for um, anyone who will show up, you know, and just, yeah, I think, but like visually, I think it, it things will become like more immersive and in that case become more accessible for everyone to enjoy and to um, take part in. Yeah, I love that. Um, do you have any, any final thoughts uh, um, about Kids Church Visuals for kids with special needs or just, just special needs ministry in general? I want to end with, um, I think that there's a lot of work still to be done. Um, especially when mm-hmm. it comes to like just visuals, um, I guess the amount of visuals that are used within children's ministry, um, and especially when it comes to reaching out to those families and supporting them. But I think I think yeah. it's, I want to encourage like different you know people who kids ministry leaders to kind of have a day where they just focus on how can we make our ministry more accessible um, and just be ready to receive families um, who may need accommodations, who have children with special needs. Um, of all ages, mm-hmm. whether that's like, you know, from, you know, there's that B. There's the B. Uh, yeah, I saw it. I saw yep. <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh-oh. Okay, we might lose you soon. Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, that's what I, was, I would say. Like, just be ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very cool. And and Tyler, just before that, before you run off. <laughs> yes. If, uh, if people want to reach out to you, if they want to see what you're doing, how can they find you? Yeah, I mean, can I, you can email me or you, probably the best way. I don't have a website or anything. Or, yeah, probably email me. You know, shoot me an email. Mm. Do I leave my email? Okay. Do I leave yeah, my email? Okay. What, oh, should yeah, I? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's, your, okay. what's your email? Um, it's Tyler, yeah. uh, J E A N I N E, Janine, Tyler Janine, one at gmail.com. Gmail.com. Yes. All right. Tyler, thank you so much um, for, for being here. Thanks for helping us uh, talk about ministry to kids with special needs. And watch Thanks out for, for having that me. Yeah, you know, it's in my backpack right now. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me. This was fun. Okay. Um, yeah, so you're taking it home. Me, just reach out to me. I'm, yes, I'm taking home the B, you know? Yeah. In my backpack. All right, Shake. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Amen. I love it. Woohoo. All right. Bye, Shake. Peace. Thank you for joining us on the Kids Church Visual Show with Shake Mozart. I'm Shake Mozart, and I want you to know that your Kids Church Visuals matter. This has been a podcast presentation of Church Visuals, executive produced by Carl Barnhill, hosted by Shake Mozart, edited by Brett McLemore, titled in show graphics by Jason Merrick. For more training to help you communicate the gospel to your children's ministry, visit churchvisuals.com.